right, welcome, welcome everybody to another interview Thursday today. We have a very special guest with us, uh, Fide Master Corey Acor from Florida. Um, he is also from the Tampa area, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, he is also our Florida Blitz chess champion. So thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So uh, this is one of the first times we ever did an interview live with uh, one of our champions, and this is also one of the biggest uh, championships we had for um, Florida Blitz uh, online chess. So let's go ahead and talk to you and uh, ask about your preparation for this type of tournament. Uh, I didn't do anything too different or too special. Usually what I do, uh, especially for Blitz, is just try to work my nerves out by getting a lot of reps in, just playing a lot of high-level games. A lot of Blitz games versus grandmasters and international masters i try to just play as many good games as i can and and just try to get my nerves out and and have the instincts working correctly um i think that's a really big part of blitz is just trusting your instinct and um yeah just feeling good having a you know a good attitude and yeah. <laughs> positive feelings yeah <laughs> so staying on and staying consistent is what he's pretty much saying here and it's very important to always uh be at the board if you want to improve so um this is also not your first uh championship win uh, i can't remember the other years if you could maybe help me out how many times did you win the championship for florida roughly uh, i it's her i i've lost track and i guess that's a good <laughs> I think that's a good thing. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Like, I remember this, though. That's when I learned chess at the age of 10 when I was I was hospitalized for a few months during the summer because I had a hip displacement mm -hmm. and I couldn't really walk. So I started to learn chess when I was in the hospital at the age of 10. Oh, wow. And at the end of that year, my first year of learning, I played in the fifth grade or K-5 um, Florida State Championship. I was only rated like around 1,100. Mm -hmm. Um but I tied for first my very first time. So that's really like kind of where I fell in love with it. And I started to think I was really good at this. And then in, in my fifth grade nationals, uh, around the same time that year, I actually, I was also around the same reading 1100, but I, I beat like several 1600s. And then and going into the final, the second to the final round, I played the highest guy in the tournament. Um, this kid rated about 1900 in fifth grade, oh, wow. <laughs> actually beat him and took him down. Um, but then in the final rounds of that national tournament, I played like a 1400 from New York and I was just like, no one told me to be careful. And, 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 uh, I just kind of thought it was going to be a walk in the park with this 1400, but he played way better than his rating, kind of like I was playing. Mm -hmm. And he surprised me and beat me. And that really crushed me really bad. Um, and after that, I promised myself that if I got this close already, that if I work hard and come back like next year, I might actually really have a chance to do it again. And it did take me a few more tries. But finally, um, in 10th grade, I won the national championship. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and uh, guys, that is an excellent story there it's saying that you don't give up as long as you maintain the fighting spirit and uh, persevere through the hardships, you could definitely accomplish anything as he has shown, especially with this title. Uh, when did you first obtain your, um, I guess your first master title, unless it was FM, which I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> I think my first one was NM, National Master for United States. Mm -hmm. And I got that when I about won the that 10th grade national championship. So I was about 14 or 15 years old. Mm -hmm. That's when I first became national master. And then I got FIDE master like five or six years later. And I've been stuck there now for the last like five years, but mm -hmm. I'm ready to go and travel actually in a few months. I'm, I'm going to Europe to, to live and travel around for about a year and hopefully I'm going for chess, so I'm, I'm definitely going to try to go up to the next level of international master, mm -hmm. maybe even get some GM norms if I'm lucky, but yeah, I'm going to go for it. Oh, definitely. Best of luck to you, man. That is fantastic to hear. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully the, you know, obviously the uh, COVID stuff will go away soon so that you can accomplish these goals. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and hop into the tournament for a little bit. Uh, so... 
like you said, you didn't do too much preparation, more so just playing games, playing games, playing games, keeping the mind sharp. Um, were there any particular games or certain rounds that kind of were key to uh, uh, key to the tournament? Yeah, I feel like this is a very uh, exciting tournament for me to talk about, and I think it's going to go well with your video today, the theme of your video. Um, if if it's okay, is it possible for me to share my screen and show them? Absolutely, please do. Um, so how does it work here on Zoom? Is it the is do just the green button share screen? Yep. Unless Let's... it says hosts as has it disabled or something. Let me go ahead and make yes, it. Yes, it it does say. Corey hosts. is now the host of the show, guys. <laughs> so now go. it'll work. Okay. all right can you see yep i'm gonna have to adjust some things really quick because uh this is the first time we did a um share screen zoom so let me go ahead and fix this super quick yeah maybe we we should have talked about this maybe first but <laughs> yeah it happens guys don't worry too much about it um let me go ahead and... i figure it's better to show the people than to just talk about it agreed so um, your screen is uh, currently shared. Um, I'm still adjusting the uh, the faces for you and I. So you can go ahead and start talking while I'm making more adjustments. All right. This tournament, to me, it's like a true Cinderella story. It started off as bad as possible. I've, I've never had a tournament start off worse than this tournament for me. Um, I was here like a half hour before round one because you have to set up the Zoom cameras and make sure you're signed up and everything and ready to go. And I was here ready to go. But round one, you can see here, I got a loss. 10 seconds before the round started, my computer shut down and started doing an update without asking me for permission. Mm. It, it just shut down on its own. I've never seen it do that. I tried to unplug it and put the battery back in. I tried to do anything to turn it back on, but... I couldn't get it back on for like 20 to 30 minutes and I lost round one. Mm -hmm. It gave me a, a straight up zero because it said I was here and it paired me, but then it gave me a loss for not making a move. Right. And then round two though, it said I was absent. It said I wasn't online. So that's actually what is going to save me and helped me win this whole tournament is because of that. Oh, wow. <laughs> So technical difficulties, guys. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and, you know, the Lee Chess system isn't perfect yet, so we just had to do with work with what we got. Yeah, that's one of the um, questions I think we were talking about is the experience versus over the board versus online. And in, in, in real life, this could never happen where uh, even, if, even if I didn't show up and, like, my car got a flat tire or something, even if you don't play, you still get a half point buy for the round you miss. That's how it always is in real life tournaments. Right. But online, not just Lee Chess, chess.com, everywhere I've played online, if you like miss the round, sometimes you just get kicked out of the tournament. You don't even get to come back and play the rest of the rounds. Mm -hmm. Or if you do get to come back, you don't get a half point buy. They, I don't think anyone does that really um, with online events. But um, standards are very different. Yeah, so you can see, like, in this tournament, the, the top people usually get paired under, like, in Swiss tournaments. So round one, I mean, I was playing a 1900 guy. Same with round two. I was probably paired with someone similar or even worse. And I probably would have won at least one of those games, I would like to think. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I did, you can imagine my score would not be seven out of the ten. I would have eight out of ten, which would put me in clear first. But... Right. So it started off terribly. I was really upset. I was about to just break my computer in half and have a breakdown. It was really upsetting, but I didn't give up. And when it came back, um, I got a few wins in versus some of these guys, not too impressive, like 18, 1900, maybe mm -hmm. a 20. But then in round five, this will be like the first game I show you. Or actually, it was my round five, but really it was like round seven in the tournament. Okay. I'll go over this one first. I actually lost this game. Um, in this game, I was black pieces. So, so maybe... already you're entering this uh, this game here with uh, obviously a lot of problems just happened, and now you have to reset immediately. 
yeah, in the beginning, yeah, I had to bounce back. And it's important for any tournament. You know, losing one game, that doesn't, that's not the end of the world. In fact, a lot of times you can still win a tournament even after losing one game. Right. That's what happened to me in my first state championship. I lost one of the games, but I won the other ones. And the other people I tied with, they also lost one too somewhere. So, mm-hmm. you know, tie for first place is still first place in my book. I don't care if they gave me the second or third place trophy. I, <laughs> I still, true. yeah. It's still a uh, strong performance. So this game I ended up losing. I'm just going to go through it kind of fast. That's fair. <laughs> I, I would say like most of it didn't really matter. Um, it's more towards the end where it becomes important. But okay. in this game, I was black. Um, is there a flip button here? Yeah, there it is. All right. <laughs> so in this game, I'm black. The opening's pretty standard stuff. I'm using like King's Indian here. Mm-hmm. Castled Queen side there. Nothing too exciting happening yet. And again, all these moves, you can see our time after each move. Yeah. Uh, I'm only spending like a second on these moves, but so is he. So this is just normal opening, not much happening. Right. And in Blitz, it's uh, mostly about just reacting to your opponent as opposed to thinking deep. Yeah, okay. exactly. Um, here, like someone might say he can take that pawn, but any decent player knows taking side pawn is always a trap. Yep. <laughs> and I would just push this B pawn up one and then the guy's bishop would be trapped. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to make something happen here in the center. This is a typical kind of plan versus Kings Indian. People try to get counterplay over here, right. but All usually right. they don't castle queen side. So that was a little bit strange, but, um, so yeah. I really didn't actually like my position very much. This guy, I would say this is probably my hardest opponent of the tournament. Mm-hmm. This, this is the only game where I was like nervous and I actually ended up losing. This was the only game I really lost, I feel like, out of the whole tournament. Okay. But So here, like I have double pawns and stuff, but I, I did that there because I just wanted this bishop to maybe have an, a brighter future. Someday I might end up moving this pawn forward now or even just putting the bishop here I was thinking about doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now I pin this knight, but I'm also threatening to win this pawn here. He guards the knight. And I decided to not take that pawn for some reason. I think it was because if my queen goes this way to get this pawn, his queen might have the opportunity to take this pawn. I didn't want him to win pawns around my king, so right. I gave that pawn first. But now he could take this pawn for free, it kind of looks like. He didn't do it, even though a computer is saying he should do it. Mm-hmm. I guess what I was thinking was if he does take it, then my rook was going to go here and attack his queen. And then she would move somewhere, and then I could probably win back this pawn. Um, but yeah... Now, um, did you have any idea of who you were playing against? No, I actually, I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would have to double check as well on the roster. But uh, yeah, this is interesting too, because online chess, where everyone has usernames, unless you know the username, you're pretty much going in blind. Yeah, there was a few people that I knew who they were. Um, also, the number one thing I'm really looking at is their rating. Mm-hmm. Like, if I know who you are, but you're only rated 1700, then I'm not worried at all. But <laughs> yeah, if you're ra- or vice versa, like there was a GM here rated 2700. I don't know who he is, but I was definitely worried about him. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> so there was a few guys that I knew, but this guy, DZ, I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. So he wins upon there. And we're just in like an even end game. But the thing about it for me was I had such that rough start with those two losses that they were giving me that I felt like the only way for me to make something happen in this tournament was I had to go for it every game. Okay. And I, I had to keep trying to get as many wins as I could. So even though the game was tied here, I was totally thinking trying to win this whole game. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a competitive mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I actually regret it though afterwards because I wish I wish I would have took a draw. I did have a draw towards the end, which we're going to get to soon. Okay. But yeah, so he's playing really good, and there he he won a pawn. But it looks like I might get one back here, mm -hmm. and I did. So the game's just tied, and it, I guess I would totally rather be him here though because his king is way more active than mine. Mm -hmm. And if he puts this pawn, for example, on a white square, my dark square bishop just can't attack a single piece for the rest of this game, actually. So I'd totally rather have knight here versus bishop. Mm -hmm. That's a tip that I like to give my students. I think that when it's like one minor piece versus one minor piece in the end game, I always prefer a knight over a bishop in the end game. Okay. But in the beginning of game and openings, I like bishops better than knights, actually. And and the blitz time control as well. Probably prefer a knight a little bit trickier and <laughs> as I say. <laughs> no, I don't think it matters whether it's blitz or slow chess, just okay. <clears throat> so here I I like his position more basically. I was pretty nervous, pretty scared in this game. Mm -hmm. So I saw he goes and wins this pawn, but I can save this one, which is important because I need someone to slow down his two pawns. Okay. And then my plan was to try to bring my king over here and hopefully I can attack his pawn soon. So he found some nice moves there where he just, he's stopping me from moving my king up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. No, you're perfectly fine. <laughs> it is kind of late at night, so, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so now, yeah, I'm down a pawn and this guy really I mean, was scaring me. We're both down to under a minute here. You can see 50 seconds, 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. I just kept trying my best here. And eventually I did have a point where I could have got a draw. So like all oh, these moves don't really matter. We're just shuffling. It, I know I can't win because I'm down a pawn. The only chance I have is maybe make something happen on time. Okay. Uh, so it's more of a question of can he try to push and make progress with his extra pawn. Can he try to go for win? It didn't really seem like he's doing it. He's just kind of shuffling his pieces around. Mm -hmm. And he's probably nervous too, which can yeah. play a factor. <laughs> yeah. So now we're getting down to both about 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then there I actually, <laughs> I, I did. I went really fast and I did make a blunder here. He could have forked me, but when I look at it longer, it's like not so clear. It's great for him because it is the, I mean, I look at, but based on the time I was going to be able to, if he forked me, I'm taking this pawn. He gets bishop. I take another pawn. Now I have passed pawn. I mean, his knight could bounce back and kill this. And then it's just an easy win for him probably. But to do all that in like 15 seconds, I, and I was going to pre-move my next few moves. So mm -hmm. he was actually just trying to go super fast right now, and he he missed that tactic. So um, that's blitz. Yeah. <laughs> and then here I won the pawn back. Now it's a tie game again, and the time was on my side here. I'm up about five seconds going into this final stretch, but. <sighs> In a few moves, I did something wrong. Right around here, we're both down to like 10 seconds. And he kind of forces a draw here by taking this pawn. I, I needed to take this, which I do. But the thing that I'm seeing is that his king was going to make it over here and kill this pawn first. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have time to calculate with only five or six seconds on my clock here. But... One thing I was noticing was his time. If you see, he's at like 8.6 seconds. Right. His his next few moves, he's going super fast to the point where he's kind of pre-moving. He wasn't even thinking. Mm -hmm. You can see again, after these last two moves, he's still at 8.5, 8.5. And this is where I tried something that I really regret. Um, Sneaky. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> the only other thing that you can try. <laughs> I pushed that pawn, and I was just hoping that he's going to keep pre-moving, and then maybe I can trick him and win this. But right. he, of course, slowed down on that move somehow, and he saw it. So, and now it's just a time scramble that I was. I kept trying, obviously, hoping to get a draw still, but now it's just right. it's hopeless here. Mm -hmm. But I see that if I would have just came over there and followed him. 
it's actually a draw. Like when he kills my pawn, I kill his at the same time. You can see that there. But even if he tries to save his pawn, I just stay by it somewhere where I'm still attacking it. Right. And he still can't kill because it's a, just a draw because I'll take his pawn next. Mm -hmm. And if he tries to like push this somewhere, that doesn't really work either. It's just a draw. So yeah. <laughs> I did have a draw, but I was going for the win because of how bad my tournament started. I thought I had to win every game. Right. And I really regret that because afterwards what happened was uh, one extra half point would have put me past the GM with eight points and oh. I would have got clear first, which means extra money. Yeah, right. <laughs> so now, um, so I lost that round, but I still didn't give up and I put together a few more wins in my next rounds. Mm -hmm. Another great win that I was proud of was first Martin Hansen and he was like one of the top players besides me and the GM that signed up I think he was number three right. going into the round that I faced him he already had six and a half and he was actually tie for first with this guy at six and a half so I got to play someone and I only had six points I think at that point so when I played Martin I knew I had to try to beat him in order to pass him and so I won that game. It was a good game, but I'm not going to show it. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then going into the final round, that's when I saw the organizer, the TD, Brian Tillis, say this in the chat over here. Right before round 10 was going to start, he said that he was giving me a half point buy for round two. Okay. And that, that was this round that says absent. Mm -hmm. Now, so like with that, that gave me like a second hope. Um, it made me really excited. Okay. And it made me feel like I, I have a chance to maybe still win this whole tournament. Because going into like that final round, I thought maybe I'll be lucky if I tie for like second or third or something. Mm -hmm. And I win like a hundred bucks back for second place. I'll be happy. But when he told me I was getting that extra half points, that really like inspired me to do whatever it takes to try to win that final round <laughs> really and cool. they paired me with the gm the number one guy who was in first place so this is the game that i it was like do or die here mm -hmm. um and so let's take a look at it i'm really proud of this game <laughs> so it starts off with like normal opening i'm using close sicilian which if you know me you know that's one of my favorite openings Oh, now I know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my best one. But, um, so all of this is just pretty standard. We're just both developing our pieces. That's an annoying move. I don't really like playing versus line that much. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first move that I think is probably wrong by me, maybe an inaccuracy. But it worked out good. Um, but I do think it's slightly wrong because like where can this knight really go from here? It's it's unclear what my plan is. I was I, I, I knew I wanted to push this pawn up too and try to maybe launch some kind of pawn trade in the center mm -hmm. and open the lines for my rook. But I was planning on just moving the knight backwards actually after I moved the pawn up too. Right. But that all changed in a few moves. So I continued with my plan. He's just trying to continue developing. And so am I. He castles. And then I finish my development here. And again, like all of these moves, it only took me maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds to do the opening. And um, I like to teach my students the three main important things of all openings is to control center, castle, and develop all your big pieces so good teamwork and i feel like i'm doing all that stuff here so i like my opening my start to the game and i was already noticing that the gm was a little bit slower than me i was already up 30 seconds just right off those first 10 moves there mm -hmm. and that's that's not such a big deal right now but it is gonna play a part in the game in a little bit okay. so next he goes here and the first thing i saw about that move was it it weakens this whole diagonal. So this bishop's becoming a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. This knight is less protected. It sends the pawn's not here protecting him. And the rook is now kind of in danger. So like the knight's in a pin as well from the bishop. And as soon as he did that move, I, I knew I had an opportunity to do this move that I'm 
really happy about. Um, this pawn move, I think, is like so important, this pawn break here, because it changes the lives of so many pieces. Like this queen and bishop, they're now going to be able to see farther and try to attack the king. Mm -hmm. This rook is going to start to open up soon, hopefully. So I really think for him, like the move that I have the most trouble with is when people block my attack by going here. Uh -huh. If he would have put that pawn here, you can see that it kind of makes this guy just stuck forever. And if I can't move him, then this bishop's not going to see far, and this rook's not going to be able to see that far. Okay, that so that's kind of feel somewhat uh, incoherent with the pawn structure. Yeah, so this is a good way to really block the king's Indian attack, which is kind of what I'm using here. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he did that, I saw my chance to go for some kind of attack. Mm -hmm. He takes this pawn, I take back, and now it, it might look like he's got three attackers here, bishop, knight, and pawn. Mm -hmm. It might look like he can win that pawn for free, but his bishop and his knight are both guarding this knight. So he really oh. can't. <laughs> Yeah, so he can't really take this pawn for free because uh -huh. I'll just take back. And he never wants to do it like this. He never wants to take back with his pawn. That would open his king and make all of these pawns really, really weak over here. Right. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Let's go back there. All right, so here we are. So instead of taking that pawn, the guy, the GM actually just plays a different move first. He, he attacks my knight. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times I like to put my knight back here to guard this pawn on b2 mm -hmm. from the long range bishop. But since his bishop can't really hurt him because his knight's in the way, I didn't feel the need to retreat here. So I actually went forward. Okay. But I, for I did it so fast. If you look at my time, 412 to 410, I forgot that he could actually win this pawn now because I just blocked my own bishop from attacking that knight over there. Right. Okay. So he, the GM went for it. He took the pawn. Mm -hmm. We do a trade. And now I'm at a very tough moment where I'm up a minute on the clock. So the time advantage increased some for me, which is good. Mm -hmm. But he's up a pawn and his position is fine. He doesn't really have any weaknesses right now. If I don't do something exciting right here mm -hmm. then he's gonna start to like consolidate and get his last few pieces out so and, if i yeah. may um when i was doing commentary for the final game here i was thinking Corey's gonna sack he's totally gonna sack the exchange here i could feel it <laughs> and i yeah. was like yes <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah i saw I, I saw your commentary actually on that <laughs> yeah you're right but the thing is is for like blitz chess you you should trust your instincts but mm -hmm. A real good players they see their instinct but they don't just do it they back it up with calculation right so i i saw rook takes bishop immediately and that's the one move that looks super exciting so i had my eye on that for sure but mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. i did it it's, it's a big decision because i'm already down one pawn to the gm mm -hmm. and when mm -hmm. i sack this rook for the bishop now i'm going to be down three points total and usually that's too much even versus someone like your own levels. And since he's a GM, I was pretty nervous about going for this. But as I sat here for like 30 or 40 seconds, just thinking about maybe what else is possible, I couldn't find anything that was attractive. I couldn't find anything that I really liked. Okay. And I, I also knew if he gets any time, like if I just make like one inaccuracy or a couple slow moves that doesn't pressure him, He's going to untangle his pieces. He's going to get out like one more rook or improve his knight or something. And then probably my rook takes bishop sacrifice will never be possible again, mm -hmm. especially if he can just like maybe move his bishop somewhere on in the next move, for example. Then he's just going to be up a pawn and it's going to be a long, hard fight probably that I won't win. So okay. I decided it was good enough and tempting enough and that I should go for it. A, a so, practical attempt to win the tournament or get a point. Yeah, I, and I really like my position. I've, this isn't the first time I've been in this kind of position in this game. I've used this close Sicilian opening like thousands of times, and mm -hmm. I've been in these kind of positions for other grandmasters multiple times too. So the sack is always fun. It's like I've done it many times there. 
and but it doesn't always work out <laughs> so but again i was just thinking like what else could i do nothing else nothing else seems to really work so i went for this and i'm glad i did so now that i saw his kings open i decided to try to get rid of like the last piece that's in front of the king his bishop mm -hmm. so i'm trying to do a bishop trade and the other thing that really made me comfortable here is like besides mm -hmm. the fact that I'm up still like 40 seconds on the clock right. Right. is that it's scary for him. I'm attacking him and he's probably going to have to be careful and, and think. And so the time advantage that was going to grow here, I kind of felt like, which was another reason that made me go for this. Um, but I also saw that it's not easy for him to make a move here. For example, this rook really can't go anywhere that's scary to me. It doesn't matter if his rook goes one. Yeah, that rook can't do much. And even this rook actually can't come here to this good line. Mm -hmm. I think if he ever did that, I would have one option is to just trade rooks. And then I could do a knight fork at least, and that would hurt him a lot. I actually, I think I see a way to win from there. Um, we, I would just take his rook wherever he goes, doesn't matter. And now when he takes back, I finish him off with this queen move. And yeah, that, dirty. That bishop's in a pen. And the only way to, to protect it would be with his queen here, but then that would leave this guy hanging too. Right. So he would lose a something either way. So part of what I'm seeing is that it wasn't easy for him to find the move here. And also this queen can't move anywhere, partially just because of what I just said. Like if I can get my queen here, he's going to have some problems. So his queen's kind of got to keep her eye on that diagonal. And that might explain why he did this move right now. Okay. He did this weird looking pawn move. Now, some things I see is that maybe his rook and queen can go up and try to defend his king and bishop better on row seven. Mm -hmm. But the very first thing I noticed was when he pushed that pawn was this hole in his territory. Um, and I'm going to try to use it for outpost in a few moves with my knight. Okay. But my knight couldn't go here first yet because the guy would just take a bishop for free. Right. But, <laughs> so first I did a trade. It's the simple things, you know? <laughs> it happens. Yes. yes. And then I backed up my knight, and now you can see this juicy square. Um, and also by moving the knights, I'm opening this piece too. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I really calculated here was to make sure that he couldn't stop both of my problems at once with this knight move. So he would save his knight and he would also block this from working if he could just do a trade. But what I saw here is not bishop takes rook. That's actually a really bad move here mm -hmm. because when he takes back, now it's his knight that's gonna be doing the forks on me. Right. So the move that I saw here is I would just attack his knight. And now he can't really move in anywhere to save it because I'll fork him. And I mean, he can take the pawn, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to win a whole night back now. And then I knew I would be doing good, really good. Mm -hmm. So here, the GM actually just went here with his queen. And then I continued with my plan to fork him. He tries to hide and make his king safe. I went back some points there. And now... I actually saw that even though I'm down a pawn, I really felt like I'm no longer down. I'm, I, I knew I was actually winning here already because even though I'm down a pawn, if you think about where the pawn's at that I'm down, it's one of these. Right. And th those are the worst kind of pawns in chess besides triple pawn. Double isolated is terrible. <laughs> so I knew that I'm, I was fine. I, I'm probably already winning even though it says I'm down a pawn. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started looking for all my attacks here. And I found Bishop takes knights, which might look like a weird trade. But the reason I did it is now I have access to this square with my rook. Mm -hmm. So his knight that was guarding that square and his queen are now both gone. And it's my turn here. So maybe rook e7 was actually the best move here. But I was trying to still like go kind of fast and just keep attacking things. And I thought that this move first, I didn't think it mattered. But it, it does matter. I should have probably played rook e7 first. Um, but I went queen here, attacking this rook mm -hmm. and this pawn. And he found this move, um, which is the great a great move because I, 
if he tries like some kind of move where he just protects his rook, for example, like queen there. Yeah. This is just game over if he lets my rook get here. There's no stopping one of these checkmates here. Mm -hmm. So he really found the one of the only moves here, I think. In my mind, I thought he couldn't do that. I thought this was checkmate. But the queen guards it. So right. <laughs> I looked for what I could do then. So I found this square again, this nice outpost square. And I saw, I, here's a good target for me. And I was actually really happy here because even though I'm not checkmating him, there's no way for him to save this pawn. Um, so he just moves his queen back. I win the pawn, now the game's tie. But again, I, I knew in the back of my mind, it's not tie. And already, if you remember, I've been talking about time a lot. I'm still ahead about a whole minute here. Yeah. And we're getting into the final moments of the game. I definitely planned on winning this game. There was no way that I was going to trade and just like give him a draw. <laughs> I, was, I was at least going to try to run him out of time or something. Yeah. <laughs> so here, he really can't say no to the trade here. I guess if he like moves his rook somewhere, then maybe my rook's going to try to go up and checkmate him. Yeah. So he pretty much has to just trade somehow. Oh, and then I checked him, and then he moved his king out of the way. And now I move my king closer to the center. And again, um, I have my eye on time. He's under a minute. He's trying to trade with me, which I've kind of learned that if I trade queens or any major piece, like let's say instead of queens, we both had like one bishop left. Okay. Or we both had a rook left. When you trade off the final piece in chess, then... Zug Swang becomes a lot more of an important thing to look out for because if you don't have like a rook, then you can't just shuffle around and waste moves. So when you go into a king pawn end game, someone can often win even when the game is tying points. And that kind of made me scared about trading here because also if like we simplify it just helps them to move faster right it's less complicated of a position so right. I, I wanted to avoid the trades here so i give him some checks i'm just trying to waste the guy's time he wants to trade queen but i don't so i just move my queen somewhere and yeah this was an annoying queen i, I think you were saying that in the commentary um his queen can't check me at all. His queen's not attacking a single one of my pawns. My queen's attacking like three different pawns of his, and, and I can check him too. So he he really hated my queen. I'm, <laughs> and now he tries to activate his own queen. So he's threatening to maybe check me here, or he wants to take this pawn and that pawn and start checking me. Um, but I'm still continuing with trying to just waste his time here. That's my only plan, honestly, was here was to just keep getting in a little bit lower and lower on time. Mm -hmm. And I needed to also make sure that I don't repeat the moves. I don't want to go back and forth three times. So, right. so this, here, this is very different than a sudden death. Uh, sorry, than a incremental delay because, you know, it right. is going to be a sudden death. Every move is going to be some sort of time. Yes. And now, again, he's down to like 21 seconds. So I'm, I'm really liking my chances to at least win the game by time. Um, so I push this pawn here, which might look like it's dropping the pawn. Might look like he can take for free. But if he did, you would see that my queen can start to take some things for free too. Right. And I would, I would be the one that's continuing to bother him. Right. And, and then making his time go lower and lower. So here he tried this move instead and now we're almost to the end of the game again if i take this pawn for free then i can't check him anymore and he would start to take this pawn for free and then he would start checking me so not sure that that would even matter probably i'd still win and run him out of time but i just didn't want to give him like any hope so i just made a random move where i still knew that he he just can't take this for free because i'll start checking him a lot mm -hmm. And this, I guess it's not such a bad move because the further up this pawn goes, closer he is to a queen. And, and I might really take that pawn someday and then I might get a queen. But I didn't really have a plan, honestly, by pushing that pawn. So now the guy goes here. And that's really his worst move of the game. One of the worst moves of the game. This whole game, he's never been down points. Mm -hmm. I was down three. I sacrificed. I was losing the whole game. But... 
now finally he's messed up and he's gonna lose that pawn soon i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. so first i hit him with this check and i saw that no matter really where his king goes i'm gonna be able to check him again somehow and probably win a pawn so he chose this square and i checked him here and he, he's down to like 10 seconds now so he's just trying to go fast but that was a terrible terrible king move allowing me to take this pawn go up a pawn and trade queens now i have nothing to worry about right. and he just made like one more move but after this he, he ran out of time here mm -hmm. he just let his time run out but this is pretty straightforward just being up a pawn here in the end game mm -hmm. yeah even w without the time advantage this you could just put it away yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. so, yeah with that win i was really really happy i mean each win is special to me. I know I've lost track of it, but chess is my full-time job, uh, teaching chess, and it's my passion, and I want to go for Grandmaster in the next few years. So it's it's very important to me, and it feels great to say I'm the current champion. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say, like, yeah, I, I was champion, like, four years ago. <laughs> People don't care about that. <laughs> People just want to know who's the champ right now. Mm -hmm. So to me, it feels great. It's it it feels like my first time each time, and it's uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Awesome, thank you so much, Corey. I really appreciate being on here, and you truly are a champion because we agreed to maybe a 10, 15 minute interview, and you went full on analysis mode, and I really love that uh, you took the extra time for us. So thank you so much. No problem. And uh, guys, up on the screen, uh, throughout the entire stream, we've had um his contact info you can find him on chess.com tampa bay uh, sorry tampa chess excuse me um and also his email address so uh, chess2k at yahoo.com if you guys are interested in getting lessons from him he's given some and honestly this is excellent content which i really really appreciate so uh cory yeah. any um any final words from you uh i mean obviously you you did a, an amazing bounce back with the rough start so i mean this I agree with you. It definitely was a it's like, like a Cinderella story. <laughs> yeah, and just to look at the final standings, like it, it does say that I got only fourth place or tied for second mm -hmm. with seven. But like I said, the the tournament director was giving me an extra half point for this round, round two. So really, my score was seven and a half, which makes me tie for first. But the Florida State champion has to be from Florida, and this grandmaster was from Ukraine, actually. So, so right there. <laughs> that's how I became state champion this year. And yes, I was just really happy. Oh, if I may ask one question, I forgot to ask this uh, earlier. Um, if you had to choose between uh, Blitz online or over the board, which would you choose for championship? Um, I really want chess to go back to over the board because mm -hmm. it's just more exciting. I feel like to me and to be there and see your opponent's reactions and um, just also to know that you really are playing who you're playing because unfortunately a lot of chess has now gone online and there's a lot of cheaters online right so especially when you start getting money involved um, yeah there's just I've been seeing a lot of cheating online I feel like and or, or just even having to wonder is this guy cheating like you shouldn't have to be thinking thoughts like that so right. this right. championship was really cool because they made each player use zoom and film your area to make sure you can't use assistance mm -hmm. so this one was great i loved the state championship um but yeah i prefer over the board chess and i'm really excited for it to come back soon yeah we, yeah. we all are and there is already chat in the background that we are looking to do it as soon as certain uh protocols are lifted so anyway guys uh i'm gonna go ahead and preface that with or go into the next thing talking about the uh the rapid uh chess championship that is coming up in excuse me let's see today is the fourth i guess three weeks february 27th um so you guys go ahead and hop on chessregister.com you don't have to be from florida to participate however you do need to be from florida in order to become the state champion as we saw right here so um go ahead and check that out guys and we're gonna post this on youtube as well so once again thank you Corey, for being with us tonight and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening thank you you too thank you All right, bye guys. <laughs>